So a church fires off a letter to a lesbian woman. You're going to get our reaction right here. And can Jesus be canceled? Find out more right here. Lord, All right, all right. Thanks for uh, for joining us today. Hey, I didn't hit the thing. Oh. This is the Better. Unscripted Podcast. There you go. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Good job. Thanks for being Johnny on the spot three seconds later. That's okay. Yeah. So, as you can tell, we're like a flawed podcast. That everything's unscripted. Like, everything um, never goes our way. And if you listened around like the two-minute, eight-second mark, <laughs> we did a sound check uh, in our countdown. Um but that's just so that hopefully you know we could go live and be right here for you. So we want to jump right into it today. I got my big old thirty-two ounce dot Mountain Dew right here from Sam's, from somewhere. Yeah, from Sam's. And uh, you don't know where you got it from? Yeah, I just didn't know if uh, if you know if our sponsors would appreciate me talking about Sam's or not. So. You're, you're a good point. Yeah. Well, Harley hadn't said anything about it. Yeah. yeah, they're really not in conflict with it. I mean, since they stroked that big check to us. Right. All the all the big money. So, cancel culture. We're talking a little bit about that. And uh, so sometimes people might think, uh, they might look at the church and go, uh, you know, they're what do you guys stand for? And, of course, we, we look at sometimes the church gets rejected. Sometimes people might want to try to cancel out the church, want to cancel out the voice of, of the church. And, really, I think that um, we're going we're gonna to show you guys uh, kind of a headline of things that are going on right now. And, uh, and also, I want to read to you a letter that a, that a church sent to a woman in, uh, in Atlanta. And so... And then you'll kind of get our reaction, and then we want to give you some things about the Bible uh, regarding it. So I hope that this works. Um, I'm going to try to to, to um, give a screen share right here to look at this article that, that's pulled up. So, listen, there's a lot of ads that come on here. We don't endorse any of these ads, just so you know. But so the headline. Wait a minute! Is, it's a ninja food over there. I mean, like it looks like a big like all ninja foodie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all those things look pretty you good. You missed the I. It sounds uh-uh. like an E, but it's a foodie. Okay, well, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm not hip enough. Hey, if you want, it might be food I. Hey, if you want to, if you want to like be really, cool. you don't say e phone. If you want to be really cool, buy one of those for your wife for Mother's Day. <laughs> she's trust me, my wife is. She we bought one of them. Oh, okay, and she wore it out. So she's got the eight hundred dollar blender at uh, our house. Okay. So, man, I don't know if this is going to work out or not. So, hopefully you can see our screen. So, the headline is, Lesbian hairdressers informed in a letter from church elders in Georgia that she'll be publicly excommunicated and fellow Christians will be banned from interacting with her unless she repents her sexuality. So, this is the Woodstock Church of Christ. Um, she is supposedly attended there for five years. Um, and everything that, we, that I've seen on this is like, mother of two. Uh, you know, divorced woman, um, single mom, you know, says these, says these things. And so, um, so before Christmas, the church elders wrote her a letter asking for a meeting. When she didn't respond, they wrote again April 1st, warning of excommunication. And the elders said that, that, uh, that she would be spurned by all the, the church community for sin. And um, they, condemned, they condemned her lack of desire to, to hear their concerns and was apparent lack of willingness to repent and the public display of homosexuality relationship. So this woman, Crystal Cox, uh, she divorced her husband and is now supposedly, we don't want to do that. Uh, not anymore. All right, so she's pictured with her um, with her musician girlfriend. And uh, so here's the letter from the church. As the elders of Woodstock Congregation, we have the responsibility to watch out for the souls of each member of this congregation. As we previously stated, we feel it is crucial to remind you that our Lord considered it vital that no one can be involved in homosexuality and it be be in a pleasing relationship with God. We sent you a letter in the second week of December 2020 and that, that was confirmed by the UPS as delivered on December 10, 2020. A copy of that letter is enclosed. In that letter, the eldership requested an opportunity to discuss with you the situation and the condition of your soul. We have not received a response to that letter. 
In light of your apparent lack of desire to hear our concerns, apparent lack of willingness to repent, and the public display of your homosexuality lifestyle, homosexual lifestyle, we have no alternative but to withdraw our fellowship with you and must no longer treat you as a sister in Christ. Please understand this is an effort to encourage you, your godly sorrow leading to repentance. This greatly saddens us because... We can no longer fellowship you as a sister. We do not care for your we do care for your soul. Our prayer is that one day you will repent and return to the Lord. When that day comes, we will receive you with open arms and love, like the Father received his erring son in the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter fifteen. Please understand that we love and pray that you will repent, seek forgiveness, and return to worshiping our Father in the Lord's church. We pray for your spiritual well being. If we fail to hear from you by April 30th, 2021, we would understand you are not repentant, you are not repentant and do not desire to be forgiven of your sinful behavior. That being the case, an announcement to, to that effect will be made to the Woodstock Church of Christ on the following Sunday. We will announce that we have withdrawn fellowship from you following efforts to establish a dialogue to persuade you to repent. Your name will be removed from our membership role until you decide to make your life right with the Lord. It is important that you understand after fellowship has been withdrawn from you, Christians must not interact with you except to encourage you to repent and seek forgiveness. They reference 1 Corinthians 5, 11 through 13 and Ephesians 5, 11. Crystal, it is our sincere hope that our fellowship will one day be restored when that day comes rejoicing at the Woodstock Church of Christ will only be exceeded by, by the rejoicing in heaven, Luke fifteen ten. Until that day comes, you will not be considered a member of the Church of Christ and Christ service, the four elders listed their names. So uh just want to uh, go back and and give look at look at this and us kind of give response to this and and first and foremost, you know, any looking out for the soul of this woman, um, we want to leave that to the eldership there. And um, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean they're they're the ones that, that look out for her soul. We certainly can encourage her, um, but as far as as far as the ho- whole details of this situation, we don't know all. We we can kind of respond to is what we've seen on the news, and then well, why did you pick this? Well, we've been talking about cancel culture, and and so it would appear in some ways that the church is trying to cancel this woman's soul. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is 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 um, I just think about kind of it's it's kind of what we've seen a whole lot from from the the homosexual lgbt community is that when when a church or a religious organization speaks out against homosexuality like there's a lot of backlash and things and so you kind of get this overbearing cancel culture that can that can uh attitude mindset that can happen and says well we disagree with what with what you say, you know, every headline that I've seen on this, it's it's not about like um, church 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 letter states that if you come back, there will be much rejoicing. You know, there's there there's nothing positive that's been said about about this letter that these elders had fired off, and I think that these guys, that this eldership, that the Woodstock Church of Christ is going to get a lot of backlash from this. And so, one, I wanted to to kind of talk about. The, the future with, with that, too, and in, in, in is to encourage that congregation in any way that we can. Three, to if I don't know if this if the woman would ever hear this podcast, but to encourage her to to turn to the Lord, and um, and then also kind of like moving forward with like how can we in the church, you know, how can church leaders, um, you know, re- respond? And because, well, it's not going to be a thirty minute day today, is it, Bob? Nope, that's why I brought my big goal. <laughs> Yeah. Why don't you tell me to get my big coffee cup you, then? You asked me. You asked me why, but whether or not we get to all that, I don't. I don't know if we will or not. So, you know the. You suppose that, you, I was thinking about some things that you said when you were talking, and one of the things that you said was, was that there was no good news or there was no, nothing good said. You know the way they framed the argument. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you talking about by the media? By the media, yeah. right? Do they ever? Yeah, right. Exactly. But they're framing it that way because they're just looking at it from this the standpoint of of 
of the world of the world but yes that's true that's but that's kind of like the universal usage of the term sure. but they're looking at it from the stamp so this lady she gets her letter right mm-hmm. and you know which one the 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 lady from the you don't the, know which the, letter the letter from the elders. I know the first one and the second one. I didn't know which one you're talking. Well, about. the one that's in the news right here that okay, you read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, why would she go to the world, right? Why would she go to the world to say, "Look what they're doing to me"? Unless she's looking for validate validation. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's that, what she's doing. She's looking to the world to, to validate her side. And the world will always do it. I mean, the, the, if if she went to the Bible and said, "I want to validate what these elders said to me." Would the Bible validate what they said? Yes. Yes. And and so what she's doing is number one, it's it's she's just looking in the wrong spot. She's just looking for validity. You know, there's this old idea that misery loves company, mm-hmm. and and so that's what she's after. Is, is the what, what, but what she doesn't realize is that the whole world is flat out miserable and don't realize it. Yeah. That's that that she doesn't. She thinks she's seeking happiness in the world. But yet she's she's just garnering more misery because at the end of the day she's not going to she, she may be she may get validity but she won't have peace she won't have real happiness she won't because you know this peace that passes all understanding this this freedom John eight thirty two that comes in do you think that she can have that in this relationship she can't no. she can't have that and so when you go through this idea here with what these with what these shepherds did and I I appreciate them doing that. And there's no doubt about it. They're going to draw some fire. You know, they're going to get some some pushback from it, and maybe even from. It's it's interesting to think that they said on April 30th they're going to read this letter to the congregation. Well, mm-hmm. this one will probably hit the ground before it gets there. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, it's already hit it. I'm sure. And so, you know, the the world's going to look at this and say, "How could you? Did you did you read, did you see some of the terms that they used? Excommunicate." Right, they're going to excommunicate right. her. That's a very denominational term, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The Bible doesn't even use that term. You know what these shepherds are after is not about. Let, let's let's look at First Corinthians five. And do you got something you want to look at before that? No, I just thought um, Romans sixteen or something like that. No, the, I just think about you know just persecution and. You know, when Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. And so the world is going to, I don't know what the world's going to say about this, about this congregation. I don't know what they're going to say about these, these elders decision. And, and I, and I hope that, I hope that one day if I'm ever an elder in the church, that that my relationship, and, and I'm not I'm not knocking a, a letter of any kind, all right. And I want to preface that that like what they did is what they did, and that's that's their decision. It's not it's not. I can I can validate what they said as far as their scripture, but I pray that that uh, that my relationship with as a shepherd to sheep, that that it would be so good that that I would never have to write a letter, and and that there would always be a. But but you know but the thing is is like if if someone's looking for sin and looking for sinful lifestyle, you know I I don't I don't think that they're really going to be looking for a sit down with with the elders. Well, the you know that's why the Bible you know First Corinthians five it, it says that in the name of our verse number four First Corinthians five in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ when you are gathered together along with my spirit that's a little s right that's not the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. With the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. What Paul is saying is that there's a this idea of of withdrawal from this person. You're delivering them to Satan so that you can. I mean, it may take some stripes right now. And verse seven, your glory, your glory is not good. Do not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Therefore, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ our Passover has sacrificed for, was sacrificed for us. You know that's what they're doing. They're they're not they're they're trying to save this lady's soul, and they're trying to spare the flock. Yeah, because if if they let this lady that has live in this unrepented lifestyle. Just do whatever she wants with no consequences. I mean, 
what what is it because even she cited in her article well other people have you know have sin yeah. yeah other people sin too what's different about my sin and and there's a big difference in other people sinning and the idea that is yours too loud no i want it louder Go ahead. oh the uh, that's good the uh, the idea behind it is is that that uh, that's where it was that's fine is that um Her lifestyle is the type of lifestyle that shows somebody that's living in an unrepented sin. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, because she's publicly stating, you know, she's she's. I mean, she's putting pictures and stuff like that right. out there. Right. There's a difference. I mean, there. Yes, I mean, I I was I was with somebody a little earlier this afternoon, and they were saying, "I'm just so upset because I feel like I want to do bad stuff all the time." I said, "Join the crowd." I mean, we all feel that way. I mean, I, I, I always, I mean, I'm constantly dying to myself. All we like sheep have gone astray. Well, and that's the kicker is that there's a difference between those that realize that there's something out to get me, the world. Yeah. And somebody that's just threw in the towel. That's this, you know, Hebrews 10, 26, right? Or, for if we sin willfully after having obtained a knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. Yeah. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation. So what you're going to what you find in here is this lady. She's just living in she's living in a lifestyle that that the world's going to just take her right in. Especially in the culture that we live in, they're trying to cancel out the right and say, "How dare you be so rigid? How dare you be so so sterile? You know, whatever you want to say, you know, so self righteous to say that somebody can't. You know, what's the next step?" Yeah. You know that's the, and so you you think about that. That's what we're doing. What, that's what you're doing with this in the church is because we realize that the step that we're in now with homosexuality, it's just a stepping stone into further you know denigration of uh, a degradation of our morals. And so, what will be the next step? Who knows, right? Right. But but that's what you're doing with this is you're trying to not cancel this lady's lifestyle, but what you're doing is trying to save her soul. Amen. And and the world's going to call that canceling out, and so then they're going to say, okay, we're going to try to we're going to try to cancel the church out. We're going to try to cancel out the Woodstock Church of Christ, and and so I think that that the elders are making every effort to save this this woman's soul. I I say every effort. I don't know what all efforts that they put forth. But well, it's definitely running from the pages. Yeah, and and they're and they're saying, hey, we tried to write, you know, we we reached out to you. We confirmed that the letter was delivered. There's all these things, and it's like. You know, there's not been, there's not been one. You know, it doesn't sound like that. There's been a sit down, and regardless, you know, there, this woman's soul is in jeopardy, and and Satan says, Satan says, hey, let me let me just reel you in here, and the Lord tells us, don't let anybody deceive you, and 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 don't let anybody deceive you, and I think about Colossians. That that's what Paul's telling telling them. He says, "Hey, don't let don't let anybody deceive you." Um, that let me turn over here. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. In Colossians chapter uh, chapter two, verse eight, he says, Be, "Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit." According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you are raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead... In your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. And I think that, and so First Corinthians five is telling us, you're not going back to that that sinful lifestyle. And if you're gonna if you're gonna go back and you claim to be a brother or a sister, and you're going back to that sinful lifestyle, you're you're going back to this this old old style of leavening and leavening the lump and living in a sinful lifestyle. And if we allow a little bit of that sin to come into the church and we approve of that sin and approve of that sinful lifestyle, then we're going to have to approve of everything else. And Paul says, no, we can't do that. And so we, and so what I loved is that they said, hey, when you come back, we're going to rejoice. And the only, the only time that there's going to be more rejoicing is going to be in heaven. But there's going to be a great rejoicing that's here at church, and we'll gladly receive you with open arms. We're just asking you to leave a sinful lifestyle. But Satan will deceive you, and he'll lead us into that deceit. 
He says, don't let anybody cheat you. Don't let them spoil you through this empty deceit. And live in a lifestyle of, of sin, whether it's fornication, stealing, homosexuality, getting drunk, adultery, whatever it is, leave it and go back. Run, Go to the Father. He'll run to you. The, you know, um, the Lord accuses on the, on the other side of the swing, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, actually the lawyers is who he points to, and he says, you take away from the people the key of knowledge. And and the 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 idea behind this is that what he's doing, what what they were doing was they were binding men with all these heavy burdens and all these different foolish laws and traditions and everything like that. And we look at the 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 Jewish culture and and think like you guys have done you, you added all this foolishness and you've done all these things and all this was was about you canceling out God so that you can feel good about what you're doing. Well, this this idea of, of this lifestyle that this lady's leave, living now is really just the same thing on the other side of the coin. It's just to the fact now that that we're saying, hey, it's okay. You know, you can feel good about God loving you. You know, we're taking this, you know, because everybody makes their own, well, doesn't Jesus love me? Of course Jesus loves us. But you're, you're, you're missing the point, though. Jesus loves you so much that he wants you to understand that you can't go to heaven this way. Yeah, That's the idea of love. I mean, you know, you think about this. Like, you ask a parent what love is, okay? Some parents are going to tell you, well, it means taking care of your kids. It means, it means feeding them. It means putting clothes on them. Let, let me tell you something. That's not love. No, uh, and I, I'm going to tell you how you know that's not the truth. Because you remember in Matthew 6 when the Lord said, look at the lilies. Mm-hmm. Every year they come back. Look at the birds. They don't soil, I mean, sow nor toil, right. but they make their nest. All these things, God takes care of them. He feeds them and he clothes them. Is that what love is? No. No. Love is that he gave that he gave us his son. Why? So we could go to heaven. That's what real. That's what the real definition of love. What God did for us. So, so for us to just think that us taking care of our kids or or providing the things that make them happy, or even on this other side of the coin that we just want people to be happy, and that's how we show them love. That's garbage. That's right. And that, and and so if if, if I were to t- so people in the world, and this is the argument that I give. And let me tell you something. I've got. I've, I've got friends that are homosexuals, and I've got family that are homosexuals, and here's the argument that I give with them. And they tell me, hey, I was born this way. So, so I, was, I was born this way to, um, to, to, to indulge in, in same-sex you know, r- relationship. Well, the heart of the gospel tells us to deny ourselves. That's one thing. But also, so, so think about this. I was born to be um, attracted to women. So if if I were to tell you, Chris, that um, whoa whoa whoa, no, I know. But if I tell you, if let's say I'm going to go out here and and I'm going to tell you, hey, that woman over there, she's beautiful. I'm fixing to go try to sleep with her. What would you tell me? Uh, you're, I'm going to stop you. That's right. And so are you you hopefully you will. And so th- this uh, w- when it comes to that, so it would be wrong for me to cheat on my wife, right? Right. But if I tell you, hey, that's just the way I express myself. You have to accept me. Well, that's baloney. That's garbage. Yes. Or, okay, Chris. Or no matter what you think. Yeah. I mean, like, let me give you a perfect example. Yesterday I went to Lowe's. You know, we're, we're, I, I needed some wiring for my building, for our mm-hmm. shop that we're building, right? I go to Lowe's. I get ready to get on my Harley, and I hear somebody in the parking lot going, Ugh! and I look over there, and there's this dude sprawled plumb out on the ground, right? I mean, like, flat on his back. So I walk over there. And I'm trying to figure out, are you okay? And he's like all incoherent, can't talk, and this and that and the other. And so I'm trying to like like figure out what's going on. Are you soused or or what's going on? He stands up. I grab my phone, take a video of it because I'm thinking like this dude is just falling all over. I'm gonna take a video in case something happens because I'm fixing to have to. I'm gonna have to strap him down. I can just feel that's what's going to happen. So I take a video of him. He stands up, falls plumb out again. Right. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I got video of it stuck in my pocket. I grabbed him. I was like, listen. I don't know what's wrong with you, but he's like, I got to get to my truck. I was like, you are not going anywhere like this, period. Not going to happen. Because number one, you, no matter what you think, you're a danger to yourself and you're a danger to everybody else. Oh, yeah. And when he turned, when I got him turned over, his his arm, he, his he, when he was laying on his back, he had you know, his arms like a turtle, right, up in the yeah. air. Yeah. When he turned over, 
his arm slid down and he had a little diabetic band on there. Oh, yeah. And his sugar had got all, sugar I mean, like, low, he yeah. looked, I mean, he was all incoherent, couldn't make sense or anything mm-hmm. like that. So uh, I'm glad he was a little guy. So I kind of got him up and set him on his trailer. And I rifled around in his truck and kind of got him coherent enough that you have the little thing to check your sugar. He said, yeah. And so I go into his truck and I checked his sugar and it was 40. Yeah. So he's about to go away from here. You got what I'm saying? Yeah, this man needs some Jesus and some sugar. Yeah. And so I run inside and get him a honey bun. And the, heaven's uh, honey bun, baby. Yeah, heaven's honey bun. And I brought, thought about your sermon. And the uh, I brought him back out there to him and he's he and, and he eats it and he's kind of you know calming down and kind of coming back in about that time a ambulance and the police showed up and you know they start doing their deal with him and everything and and you know it's funny because he tried to give me a dollar for the honey bun i was like listen if, if you pay me then you're taking away my blessing i said at number right. two i said i don't know if you bought a honey bun at lowe's lately but you went through that dollar in the first two bites yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah. so but but the thing of it was was that Low sales honey buns. Well, I didn't know. I, the first thing I found was a Milky Way, <laughs> but he was probably almost seventy, and I thought, what if he ain't got no teeth? How's I ain't gonna preach you this Milky Way for him and give it to him? And so I, th- I found a honey bun. Yeah. Well, I give it to him, and 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 I'm gonna tell you, no matter what he thought, no matter what was going on, I had to physically stop him from doing this thing because right. it. He was convinced that he could make it somewhere. I had to take his keys, and I had to pull it away from him, and I did it because I knew that this was not the right thing to do. That's right. He would be living a destructive lifestyle. Exactly. Yeah. And, and he had a truck with a trailer behind it. Yeah. And so so you, you just think about all the carnage that he's can leave in the wake of it, of himself, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, what if this had happened 20 minutes earlier on the way to Lowe's? Yeah. I mean, you know, it could have been all kinds of bad stuff. That's right. And, and hey, we had calls all the time as a sheriff's office on drivers who people thought were drunk. They'd be all over the road hitting things, hitting people, whatever. And it was just a diabetic thing going on. And, and so, but, yeah, so you look at, so then you flip, flip that over to a drunk lifestyle. You know, you probably thought this guy may have been drunk or whatever. But yeah, I mean, the, the, that's... <laughs> You know, you, you you can call it what you want, but you know you judge a book by its cover a lot of times. This guy was hollering and flopping around in the parking lot and everything. I mean, he looked like a drunk. Yeah, and and so what? If, what if I were to tell you, Chris, the way I express myself is by kicking in people's doors and stealing things from them. Yeah, that's foolishness. It's foolishness, and so but but the world validates homosexuality when they don't validate anything else. And, uh, or, you know, well, they do validate getting drunk and, and, you know, taking some girl home from the bar or whatever. And, yeah. And so we'll validate those things. Um, but, but that's the whole thing is, is, um, you know, here's something interesting during this pandemic deal that was going on last year. Mm-hmm. I got a buddy of mine that, that, uh, in Virginia, the liquor stores are all run by the, the, uh, the, the government, mm-hmm. the, by the state. Oh, okay. And they made the, the liquor stores essential, uh, open places. And so everybody was flipping out. Well, I had a buddy of mine that he made the best point. Now, I, I am not we, – we clearly we did our thing on the drinking, you know, a yeah, little right, while ago. Right. But what he said was – this was a kind of a – I never thought about this, but Lee said that there are so many people that are alcoholics out there that depend on the liquor day in and day out that if they close the liquor stores, the hospitals and stuff that are already overrun with COVID patients, you're going to have all these people – that are alcoholics that are DT and they can't get to their liquor. So they deemed it essential. So they had to deem it essential. Now, how about that? Yeah. I mean, you know, that, that just tells you how far down that rabbit hole we've gone with it. Deceitful, deceiving. And, and, and that's where, and that's where we're at. And, and you think about this, like, so back to the love thing. Okay. Is, is this tells us that second Corinthians five verse 14 for the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus that if one died for all, all have died. Then all, then all died, and he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Jesus said, "If you love me, keep my commandments." And so, true love, the love of Christ on the cross, compels us to say, "I'm no longer going to live this sinful lifestyle and be deceived by Satan." And, right. that, and so you point this over to, to Romans 6 that, hey, don't go back and be a slave of sin. Yes, yeah, shall we continue in sin? The grace may abound. God forbid. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? And, uh, or do you not know as many of us as were baptized into Christ, baptized into his death, we died to ourselves. 
Therefore, we're, you know, we're, we're raised again with him to walk in nearness of life. And so this woman back, you know, in Atlanta, she was apparently, I don't know if she was ever, ever baptized for the forgiveness of her sins, but they claim that she's a member of the Lord's church. So, well, that's the only way you get into the way, church. That's the only way you can get in. So, um, I'm rattling things in my mind. Right. Talking, I, talking I, I get it. <laughs> right. And, uh, and so they're encouraging her. Look at Romans six. God's grace is not gonna not gonna reach you if you're sinning willfully. Hebrews ten twenty six. It's not gonna work out for you. So, so how do we how do we encourage church elders, you know, to to really love sheep enough to help them transform their lives? I say let, let me. This is a really cool verse. Let's look at Isaiah thirty and verse twenty. You know, I. Isaiah is just one of those ones that, like, you can just take one verse, throw a dart in the book of Isaiah, and just make a month's worth of sermons off of it. Yeah. In Isaiah 30 and verse 20, it says, and you there yet? No, and I probably can't quote this one. Isaiah 30, 20? Yeah. Okay. It says, and though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. What's that say? Trouble, right? Mm -hmm. Oppression, yeah. Right. Yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore, but your eyes shall see your teachers. No matter how tough it gets, we're not going to live in the shadows anymore in the church age. We're not going to live in the in the corner. You know, they 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 stop the mouths of the prophets. Yep. You know, you're either, you're either going to draw lines or you're not. That's right. And you have to do that in the church. That's right. And and listen, if we're persecuted, we're persecuted for it. You know, then you know that you're doing the right thing. Yeah. And what I said a minute ago, what I was meaning is, how do we how do we encourage elders like in ways to love people? How do we how do we get these sheep back in the fold? As far as like transforming lives, and that's what I was saying is I hope that, that my relationship with sheep is never the point that I'm firing off letters or emails to them. But but I, you know, a shepherd he he's just smell like sheep. Well, you know, obviously, you know, there's a. I'm not saying the letters the wrong thing. No, I mean the Bible says mark them, and I don't know how else you mark them. Yeah, and I mean that's just as easy as a uh, as as any other way, right? And so mark what mark them which walk contrary to the doctrine of. Christ. I mean all these things, you know, First Thessalonians. I mean Second Thessalonians three six three fourteen. Both of those deal with the same idea. First Corinthians five, Romans sixteen seventeen. I appeal to you, brothers, watch out for those who cause division and walk contrary to the doctrine. You know, Second John one nine through eleven. You know, you know, it's it's the same it's this idea of fellowship you know so first john one you know if we have fellowship one with you know we walk in the light we yeah. walk in the light we have fellowship one with another it's a triangle mm -hmm. there it's not a a single thing like you and i have fellowship yeah and us and god so bob and god chris and bob chris and god you know it's a triangle but once bob breaches that or chris breaches that your fellowship is still tied with god and then everybody else in the world that's in in fellowship with god but but once i abide not as second john 1 9 through 11 not first john not first john 1 but second john 1 9 he abides not in the doctrine he abides not in the teaching this person has no fellowship with god that's why ephesians 5 Paul is admonishing the Ephesians that, that are living in this, this uh, city of Ephesus, this place of, of Diana the Ephesians, and, and they had the book burning there in Acts 19, mm -hmm. and all these things, great things are happening. And he tells them in Ephesians 5, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And so you have an absolute responsibility now, the shepherds. Right now, these shepherds—they're the ones that you know. You know Hebrews thirteen seven and seventeen. You know, watch. I mean, obey those that rule over you. You know, seventeen. Submit to those. You know, this idea that they're the ones that watch for your soul. And so, you know, number one. Will you start quoting some scripture? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so number one. Go ahead. Number one. You can't just be, you know. Uh, keyboard warriors. Mm -hmm. You got what I'm saying? It's yeah. real stinking easy for me to be a, you know, Joe, one of our members was yeah. something the other day. He said, and I, and I, and he had a, a helmet. He was looking for some kind of army helmet. Right. And I said, uh, what are you, they don't provide you a war helmet, you warmonger or something yeah. like that. And, and like 10 people got in there like, I can't believe you called him a warmonger. Well, they yeah. don't know. They don't know that your relationship. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I just thought it was funny. Yeah. They just thought you were a troll and, and that's, and it is real easy for me to sit behind the keyboard and, and pet keys and me be a big, me be a big dog behind the keyboard. Exactly. And, and it's, it's, and so the, the whole idea is that I just, I just know that the church leaders, if you're going to draw lines, 
if we're going to draw lines in the church like like the Lord wants us to draw lines, as far as we're going to draw lines, this is what love is, this is what sin is, this is what the truth is. If we're going to love people the way that Christ loved them, which when he when he's the woman was caught in adultery, he didn't tell her, I don't condemn you, keep going to live in this lifestyle. He said, where are your condemners? They were going to stone her. She said, there's no one, Lord. He said, neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. Don't keep, don't keep living in this life of, of adultery because it's the wages of sin is death, you know. But the gift of God is eternal life. Well, don't take that, don't take the gift of God and trample it underfoot. That's what, that's what Hebrews ten after twenty six is talking about. Is he says, hey, under Moses' law, two or three witnesses, you know, you're going to be condemned. He said, what's, what's going to happen to us if we trample underfoot the Jesus Christ? And, and what's going to happen to you then? What do you think is God's going to, how is he going to view us? Because this is the way he views things in the Old Testament. How is he going to view somebody who, who takes the Son of God and looks at Jesus on the cross and says, I'm not going to live for him. Yeah, that's fine. I, 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 want, I want to accept that gift, but the fact that me putting him on the cross and my sin that's putting him there, I'm just going to continue to live in that? God's going to condemn us for that. And so if we're going to draw lines as a church and truly call sin what it is, call love what it is, call the truth what it is, then we're going to have to, we're going to have to really, church leaderships, church leaders are really going to have to get involved heavily in the souls of their people and really smell like sheep. Yeah, the reason why they're going to deliver them to such a Satan, the one to such a Satan, like if I couldn't be around the church right now, it would kill me. That's, that's exactly right. So we have to make fellowship such a such a tremendously important thing, you know. I, that's why I'm glad that, like, you know, our, our, uh, you know, one of the things that we we've kind of changed a little bit here during the pandemic deal was that when we started back on Wednesday night, you know, we're not doing the traditional like um, I say traditional. I don't mean nothing, nothing in a negative about it, yeah. but mm-hmm. but you know, we do our class and then we used to do a devotional period afterwards, right? A little ten or fifteen minute devotional period. I don't know if you've noticed this, but like. You know, since we just do the class now and stop at a quarter till. The, by the way, we stop at a quarter till, Bob. Just, just, just listen, so you know. Listen, okay. I'm, I'm giving kids, teenagers, evidence. Okay. That the Bible's really from God. Well, if you give it to them an hour and a half, and you can I, cut that in half, and you're and in forty-five minutes. I stopped minutes. at at twelve till last night. And so, anyways, the um, but you watch children's faith <laughs> is so much more important than time. Well, what is awesome is that everybody. You know, at a quarter till instead of our devotion, everybody gets together and just hangs out, you know. Mm-hmm. And so you got 100, 150, whatever people just, just being together, being around each other on a, on a Wednesday night. And that's just such an awesome thing. And the reason why this is there is so that what if when somebody came in that was living in an unrepented lifestyle that wanted us to walk in and just be like, I, 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 I'm living this way. And everybody went up to him and said, I love you so much. I want you to be with us so much in heaven that you have got to change this. And until then, our relationship can't be like what it was. We're not going to eat barbecue together, and we're not going to have. We're not going. We're not going to talk about. Everything we can't fish. We, talk about. we can't hunt together anymore. All those things have to go by the wayside because, it, and it's not. And it's not because I don't want those things. I want those things so bad, but I can't let you do this. I can't. If if I do this, I'm not loving you the way the Bible will tell me to. And we want people to understand too that, that there's a difference between me messing up. If I stub my toe and I say a bad word, all right, I didn't wake up and go, God, I just really hope that I'll stub my toe and say a bad word. If if a, if something comes across your phone as a man and you lust after something on your phone, then you, you have to leave it. But it's it, there's a difference between willful sin. And sins that are unintentional. Right. We all have unintentional sin. But for me to go out and for me to pursue sin, that is That's the willful That's this willful sin, and that's this type of relationship that this woman is in right here. And that's why these elders are saying, You need to repent, you need to turn away from this, and you need to repent publicly, or else we're gonna publicly mark you. Because and, and Paul later in that in that I think it's right there in First Corinthians five, he said, Hey, I'm not saying don't have fellowship with anybody in the world because you'd have to leave the whole world to begin with. Right. You're gonna you're gonna in, interact in, in evangelism. You're gonna be you're gonna be dealing with people that are in a sinful lifestyle at times. But he's talking about the church. If you're someone who's claiming to be a brother or sister, that's the difference. If I'm saying that I've been baptized for remission of my sins, 
I'm now a child of God, but yet I'm going to go willfully live in sin. That's that's Satan deceiving you. One of the most misquoted verses that I hear in the entirety of the scriptures is in Matthew 18. People will say this all the time, where two or more gather together in my name, there I'm with you also. That's that's talking about going back to that person and yeah, them back that's, for Christ. That's a disciplinary scenario, yes, right? Yes. It's not like, well, well, Bob and I well, are fishing. We got together. We're fishing Sunday morning where Jesus is I with know. us. No. No. That's not it at all. That's that, when you're going to try to gain them back to the He's Lord. giving your stamp of approval. That's, that's what right. he's saying. Like, And so so shepherds, then, they have a tremendous responsibility. Pray for them. Yeah. Oh, man. Yes, but that's the thing. That's the hardest. That's the hardest conversation to go have with somebody. Are you kidding me? Because they think I'm pointing the finger at you and saying I don't have sin. I'm self righteous, and you have a sin. So let me pull this little speck, and they'll quote that. And they'll misquote, you know, Matthew seven. Mm-hmm. Let me pull that little speck out of your eye, Chris. You know, when I've got a big plank over here. Right. No. The fact the scriptures tell us, you who are spiritual, what? Restore such a one. Restore such a one. In meekness and fear. That's right. Lest yourself also be tempted. The hardest conversation to have is to go back to that person and to, to love them enough to say, I'm going to go have this hard conversation with you. I'm going to cry with you, and I'm going to beg you to come back to the church. And good Lord, I mean, I'm so thankful that he loves us so much that he, that he told us what we need to do. But, but at the end of the day, those are the hardest conversations in the world to have. And that's why Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. That's right. I'm there with you. Go. Go That's to right. them. That's right. And so, you know, shepherds, they got to be amongst the sheep. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they got to be amongst the sheep. And so if you're going to if you're going to draw lines, right, even if you don't have a, an eldership, right, you know, I mean, it's, you, you have the same responsibility in your life. Even if, you do, if you're a part of a congregation that may not have elders, you know, there's still mm-hmm. congregations, lots of them out there that don't have shepherds men's meetings you know whatever mm-hmm. you know you still have a responsibility it's not like you're a, a relieved of that responsibility if you don't have elders well, we don't have elders so we can't go rebuke anybody no, nope no and so you know now granted we got to be real careful with just yeah you know being the uh vigilante you know <laughs> the vigilante rebukers right absolutely and the um uh, but sure enough sure as the world turns you know we still have a responsibility to to help bring people up and and that and that passage you're quoting there in Galatians 6, you know, the this idea of restore such a one unless yourself also be tempted. You know, I really think Paul is saying there, like, be real careful that you don't make compromises. You know, because if somebody, mm-hmm. if, if you come to me and like, you know, e- even if, let's just say that I have a, that I like to drink a little bit, mm-hmm. right? And you come to me and you say, I'm just, I'm disgusted with my lifestyle of drinking and I just, I can't take it anymore. I've got to quit. I'm just done. I'm sick of it, whatever. I just can't see that if you come to me in penitence, that I'm going to look at it and think, even if I, even if I, uh, you know, might do that thing sometimes, Mm -hmm. even at that moment, I can't look at it and think that if somebody's coming to me with this nastiness that they're, they're, they're conveying here, I'm not going to look at that and say, you know, I might like to get some of that. I don't think that's what Paul is talking about there. I think what he's talking about there is when somebody comes to you and they're, and they're in this lifestyle, they've done something that's terrible wrong. They've got something that they've got going on in their life. Be real careful that you're not tempted to make compromises. Because I'm going to tell you that the biggest compromises come, especially in families, yeah. especially in those people that are real close to us, mm-hmm. the people that we grew up with, that are friends for umpteen years or whatever. So all of a sudden, you know, I've seen, I've got books that I've, that I've, that people have written like on the, the subject of marriage and divorce and they're sound and they're good, faithful, you know, literature. And then when something happens in their children's lifestyle, all of a sudden you start reading their literature 15 years down the road and it changes. Mm-hmm. And it's because of they that, made a compromise. They made a compromise. And that's, and that's the whole thing is if there is going to be a, which the word, the word disfellowship, we don't find that. Right. But, if there's if I'm going to to not have fellowship with somebody because of willful sin to protect the flock, there has to be fellowship before that. That's right. There has to be this relationship. That's why that's why you just coming and sitting in a pew at whatever church that you're at and you coming in and your relationship's only vertical with God and you're not having a relationship with people horizontally who are with you, you're wrong. You're dead wrong. Because there are seventy five one another's in the New Testament. Love one another. Speak to one another. All these things that, that we're to have this fellowship with one another. And, and there's fellowship with the Father. 
But the church is there. And so people would tell me, well, you know, I'm good with God. Well, if you're good with God, then you need to help me be good with God. Because I need help. Every one of us need help. And so there's got to be this fellowship. There has to be this environment that's so loving and so joyful and so great, that's so different than the world that says, man, I don't ever, if I go to sin, I'm going to lose that, I'm going to lose that fellowship with them. And that's, that's, it should, it should hurt them so bad. That's what you're talking about a second ago. It should hurt me so bad that if, that if I could not be part of the church, that, that it's just devastating. Yeah, I, I, haven't you heard the stories of, of somebody that's living a, uh, in a certain sin or some particular problem that they're just they just won't give up and like on a, home, a Sunday night a, the church instead of having oh, they go they go after the sheep yeah they go the whole church goes together yeah, to somebody's man. house yeah. I mean just think about the impact you know I I want somebody to do that for me mm-hmm. you you know what I'm saying and yeah. and and right now I want somebody to do that for me so if if I get in that shape. I want somebody to do that for me, and because I want somebody to bring me back more than anything, and I don't want somebody to to to, to pass you know to pacify me in my sin. I want somebody to help me to be better. Now I, I can say that now, and I may be whistling a different tune if I'm in that in some kind of particular problem. But I but right now, <laughs> Chris Donovan of Sound Mind and Sound Judgment, you yeah. know, right? That's what I want. Some and, of them you got to pull them out of the fire, and that's June twenty three. Some of them you got to say by snatching them out of the fire, and and so you know this idea of cancel culture. I mean, they tried to cancel Jesus. You know, everything every time the Pharisees and Sadducees came to him, tested him, saying they were trying to cancel culture Jesus. They were trying to cancel culture. You know, this every step of the way. You know, with with the atheistic evolution of thing you know the as it went and permeated the school systems it laid groundwork and it's got into our textbooks it's got into to into our kids brains and minds to where now we're you know we're having to even battle this idea of theistic evolution you know that we're trying to make a compromise that, that maybe god used billions of years to evolve the earth and and all these things are about canceling out what what is true and good and just and right and we got to realize that the source of this it's not man, but it's Satan. Mm-hmm. It's from the it's from the father of lies. The source of it isn't love. Exactly right. And and there's a there's a whole other thing too that Ephesians four fifteen says speaking the truth in love you may grow up and then we're going to grow into Christ when we do that and so I, people need heavy doses of love and people need heavy doses of the truth and and that's that's what the church needs to be about and if 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 we're gonna if we're truly gonna be pulled in sheep away from the wolf and and that's that's the end of this the end of it is destruction it's death when that sheep wanders off it's it's gonna die and and so I we look at sin and the world looks at sin and we as Christians sometimes can look at sin and we can go man that looks that's that's enticing and 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 that's the way that Satan paints it to be but. You know, so my dog, he he was sick for a couple of days to his stomach. You know why? So there, so there's this. You know, whenever you you grill on your grill and that grease bucket that the it, little the little catch underneath it, yeah, it catches all that. Stuff. <laughs> he got in it. Well, so that that thing it had water in it from our old grill, and so I took this old grill thing, this old grill nasty bucket, and I went off and poured it out. Well, puppy dog got a hold of it like I don't know four or five weeks ago. So then, so he spent like half a day throwing up all over, the, all over the yard. Well, so I've been trying to let him like get out and go do his own thing, and uh, and just you know giving him a little more time. He's a German Shepherd, and so the dog, you know, two days ago, here I'm letting him get out. Well, I find him over at one of them old spots, and he's over licking and eating the grass and the grease that he had once threw up because it made him sick before. Mm-hmm. And it just made him sick again. That's, that's, that's biblical, ain't it? That's, that's right. Dog returns his vomit. And, and that's what's happening is when we leave sin and we're buried with Christ in baptism, man, we're raised to walk that new life. He didn't want us going back and licking the throw up. And, and if you look for it in the world, they'll always give you a bucket of it if you want it. This is the Unscripted Podcast.